just tonight to get in the nomination. But the question is, how are you going to unify your party and then unify the country after that? Is there a peace deal between you and Nikki Haley to move forward as a party? Well, my focus is really at this point, it's on Biden. We uh, should win almost every state today. I think every state. Last night, as you know, we won uh, with 87 percent of the vote. We won North Dakota, a great state with a great governor, by the way. Uh, but we uh, we really look at it, Biden. We think we're going to be very well unified. We're, I've never seen enthusiasm. Look, I did great in the first one. I did great in the second one. I got millions and millions of more votes in 2020 than I did in 2016. We're going to do, and a lot of bad things happen there, whether you like it or not. And uh, we're going to do phenomenal this one. We have a secure election. We're going to make it secure. It's going to be more secure. That's the biggest the biggest threat we have. And we have more enthusiasm now than we had in 2020 or 2016. And that's a lot. Here's what Nikki Haley said about her chances, because in the polls, as you know, she seems to uh, beat Joe, Joe Biden by a wider margin. Oh, you're closing the gap. Here's what she that's said incorrect. yesterday. Here's what she said yesterday. If you look at any of the general election polls, Joe Biden and Donald Trump are even. I think there was a Fox poll today. He was up by two. That's still margin of error. Between last week's poll and this week's poll, I defeat Joe Biden by up to 18 points. Well, your reaction to her as a general election, she thinks she's a better general election candidate. Your thoughts? It's a lie. She knows it's a lie. Look, I have beaten Biden in every poll taken for the last three months. She loses to Biden in the poll. She had one fake poll that was taken a long time ago, uh, actually before she started on her little kick, and it, where she was up, nobody ever heard of the poll. Nikki Haley loses to Biden. He, she will lose to Biden. The polls are saying that. And then when you add other candidates, she loses by even more. We are winning against Biden in every single poll, and everybody knows it, whether it's the New York Times, whether it's any of the polls uh -huh. that have been taken over the last three months. So she's misrepresenting that fact, and it's fine. It's not going to matter because I think we're going to win every state tonight. I did, I did see her up in a poll, uh, double digits, uh, but you are up. You won, you're up by four in the New York Times. You're up by two in the Fox News, the Wall Street Journal, two, and the CBS poll, four. But, Mr. President, can we get your reaction to, it looks like you're winning with Hispanics based on the polling that we got yesterday. You've gained ground, 20 points with black voters. I mean, what's the operation going to look like in this general election? I, I hear from your advisors that there's going to be no city left behind. We're going after everything. Look, we have a different country than we had even two years ago. This whole migrant invasion of our country, destruction of our country. You look at what's happened to New York and Chicago. You look at what's happened to Los Angeles. We have a much different uh, country in many ways, but also from a voting standpoint. People that were modestly happy three years ago uh, are devastated right now. Their country has been invaded. Uh, they can't go to hospitals. They can't go to schools. They can't use their playgrounds for their kids. They cancel out the Little Leagues. I read today where Little Leagues are being canceled out all over the country because you have migrants living all over the parks and the fields. Our country is a mess, and right. uh, I think you have a much different uh, country than you do. We're going to make a heavy play for New York. We're going to make a heavy play for Virginia, states that generally don't go Republican. I think they're going to go Republican in a lot. I think they've got, I think, the, frankly, I think the Democrats have themselves a big problem. Well, it's, uh, it's fascinating what's taking place. I think a lot of people are dumbfounded uh, by your numbers, and especially over this uh, past weekend, and you compound the momentum you got with the Supreme Court decision. Can we talk about your policies for a second? As you know, this sure. president of the United States, when it comes to Israel, is getting protested. Now he seems to be turning on Israel. But the, but the non-committed vote that Biden's getting, they're not going to like you either because you are firmly in Israel's camp, correct? Are you on yeah. board with the way the IDF is taking the fight to Ga in Gaza? You've got to finish the problem. You had a horrible invasion. It took place. It would have never happened if I was president, by the way. As you know, Iran was broke, Brian. They were broke. They had no money for Hamas, for Hezbollah. They were broke. This would have never happened. And for another reason, they wouldn't have done it to me. I guarantee you that. They did this because they have no respect for Biden, and frankly, they got soft. And what happened here is incredible. That 
It should never have happened. Likewise, Russia would never have attacked Ukraine. Never. You know it. Everybody knows it. And that wouldn't have happened. This think, is all on Biden. Do you think the president's in the process of abandoning Israel? I do believe that, but I don't think he knows where he is, frankly. I think you could uh, ask him a question right now, ask him the same question. I don't think he knows what to say about many subjects, actually. So, it's really the people that surround him. It's the fascists and the communists that surround him. They're making the calls. They're calling the shots. He's not calling the shots. Mr. President, what did you feel about Kamala Harris calling for a ceasefire uh, in, in Gaza? Is that something that you support? Is that something that is totally off the table right now for you? Look, I hate seeing what's happening. Again, it would have never happened. This attack on Israel and likewise Israel's uh, counterattack, which is what it is, would never have happened if I was president. And you know that, Lawrence. This would have never right. happened. And it's, it's so horrible to watch it. Because, you know, if uh, things went right uh, in 2020, which they should have, but they didn't for, for some very bad and uh, sinister reasons, uh, this would all these people that are dead in Ukraine and Russia and Israel and all these right. people that are dead, all these areas that are destroyed, uh, it would it would people would be leading great lives right now. All of these dead people, much more importantly than the physical, but cities that are just totally wiped out all over the place. We're going to end up in World War Three. This is the worst president in history. He makes Jimmy Carter look phenomenal. It makes Jimmy right. Carter look brilliant. Well, the far, uh, foreign policy. Let's bring it domestic for a second. I know in about two or three weeks with your court cases, if uh, I'm going to believe what I read in the, the decisions, you have to come up with something like $400 million. How close are you to securing the bond or what you need for that? I have a lot of money. I could do what I want to do, but this was a horrible illegal decision this was a decision made up by a crooked judge a hundred percent crooked clubhouse judge a disgrace with a equally crooked attorney general who campaigned on i will get trump and we're appealing that decision and we'll see how we do but i'll tell you what people are leaving new york businesses are fleeing new york because of that decision they used the statute to go after me that was never so, used before. So you're not never worried. Never used before. You're not worried about the money. I don't worry about, about anything. Miss, I, no, I don't worry about the Miss, money. Miss, I don't worry about money. Mr. President, a lot of people believe that you're at your best when you're fighting for the American people. And we just heard in the diners, we heard immigration. But the other top issue was the economy. What are you going to do to give us some relief when it comes to this inflation? People are going to, the, you know whether it's the gas station or to the grocery store, and they're being hit hard. How do you fix that in the first 100 days? Well, first of all, let me speak to the people in the diner. I saw the vote, and there was 100% Trump, <laughs> none for my opponent, and I love you in the diner. I will take care of you, and we're going to drill baby drill, and we're going to get prices down. Energy's going to bring it all down. We're going to get a lot of that oil. We're going to get the oil and gas right from Texas and other places, but from Texas largely, and I just appreciate it. I saw that vote early this morning. They said, Will said, Will's doing a good job, by the way. Will said, uh, you for Trump, and the whole place went crazy. What about Haley? Nobody, right. not one person. So all of those people in the diner, I love you. Right. So, so speaking of Nikki Haley, she's coming up shortly. Uh, after tonight, if the polls are correct and you run the table and you're a week away from locking it up, will there be any effort on your side to reach across and say, okay, just like Ted Cruz, just like Marco Rubio, uh, let's make amends and, and, uh, and fight on one side? Will you, would you call her, reach out to her? Look, she said she'd never run against me, and she did. She said she uh, beat Ron DeSantis in the uh, in Iowa, and she didn't. She ran up, and she did. She she misrepresents a lot of facts. She's not doing nearly well against. She's not doing very well against Biden. She shows these polls that nobody ever heard of. It's you got to tell the facts. You got to tell the truth. The answer is I want everybody to come together. We're going to have a unified party because our our real opponent happens to be named Biden. And he's a disaster, as I said, the worst president in our country. He's destroying our country. So, Mr. President, so are I don't you, think are you, in terms of you, Nikki Haley. Yeah, so I'll tell you, you what. Mr. President, I'll real quickly, because we only got a little bit of time with you. Is this your call right now to say, after tonight, Nikki Haley, join me on stage for the good of the Republican Party? Is that your request for her tonight? Well, there's no path for her to win. 
whether she likes hearing that or not, there's no path for her to win, no matter what. Now, today, I should win, hopefully, every state. I won North Dakota last night in a landslide, 87 to practically nothing. There's no path. You, you just saw the vote in Texas. That was a poll. That diner is a poll. Everybody was 100 percent for Trump. Uh, there is no path. What's she doing other than hurting other than hurting the Republican Party? Now, I have to say this. Democrats gave her a lot of money. Democrats are because uh, as a certain person, Gavin Newscomb said, there is a man named Gavin Newscomb. He interjected himself into this. He said she's their best surrogate for the Democrats. And that's right. Uh, she lost when you had Republican primaries where Democrats were allowed to vote, and they went in large numbers to try and make me look bad, and I still won, and I won in South Carolina against her. So, look, there's no path for Nikki. I wish Nikki the best, but she stood up and many, many times said, I'd never run against our president. He was a great president. I would never run. And then she ran. So, you know, those things you don't like to see. You like to see people that are truthful. With all of that being said, our party has to come together because we have to beat the Democrats, and they play dirty. They play very dirty. And we're going to beat them, and it's going to be the greatest election, maybe even more so and maybe more important. I believe that November 5th is the most important day, perhaps, in our country's history because November 5th, we're going to hopefully get Biden out. It's going to be Election Day, November 5th. That's the most important day. We're going to get rid of Biden, the worst president ever, and we're going to close up our borders, and we're going to drill baby drill, and we're going to have a great economy. I'm doing tax cuts. Additional, I gave the biggest tax cuts in history. They're bigger than the Reagan tax cuts, the biggest regulation cuts in history, and we'll go back to what we had. We have the greatest economy yeah. in the history of our country, and we're going to have it again, but in spades. It's going to be bigger and better than ever before. But we have to win this election because our country right. can't take too much more of this. So I sense the doors open a little bit yeah. for reconciliation, uh, and we'll see how uh, this all finishes out tonight. Mr. President, thanks for starting your day with us. Thank appreciate you, Mr. President. It. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think one of the biggest things to emerge is he thinks Will Cain's doing a good job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, uh, he loves the diners. <laughs> he, lo he loves the diners. I, I, a couple of things are, go are going on right now. I mean, he obviously feels as though he's on yeah. a roll. Yeah. And for the longest time, all you heard about was the court cases. Mm -hmm. Now you're hearing about uh, victories. Well, I, I think that he also believes that he could win these court cases right now. He feels like the Supreme Court is standing on the rule of law. He feels like the Fannie Willis case is breaking. Uh, he feels like he has some ground in the Muni case. But it also seems like he has the wind in his sails that he was right on the issues when it comes to immigration, with economy. He feels like that is his comfort zone when he's focusing on the policies that he has a record on, quite frankly. Right, and you see right now the one problem that he's gonna have. When you see the courts push back on sanctuary cities, yeah. push the court push back on repurposing defense funding, the courts push back on remain in Mexico. That's what happens when you have to go around Congress and go through executive orders mm -hmm. to get your agenda across. At some point, Who's ever president has got to get legislation done to put it into law. Mm -hmm. So some judge who doesn't feel as though that policy reflects that person's mm -hmm. belief doesn't reverse at all. We're seeing what happened in Texas. In the state of Texas, yeah. you guys get control of your border, and a judge says, no, that's, uh, that's unconstitutional, and, the Supreme, and they now have stayed the order. Less executive orders, more laws passed in law uh, in, in, into uh uh, into the docket. That way, the next administration does, right. doesn't undo it like Biden did on day one. And again, the president in a controversial area where uh, a lot of people